right, we're going to go ahead and get started. We'll call the June 8th, 2017 Planning Commission meeting to order. I want to welcome everybody uh, to the meeting. And before we get started, take a little note of personal privilege. Uh, go Preds. <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, game time is 7, 7 p.m. tonight. I hope everybody tunes into the game, watch the Predators play. <laughs> So, let's uh, go right to the agenda. Uh, has everybody looked at the, to item B, which is the adoption of the agenda? Has all the commissioners looked at the agenda? Any edits, additions, deletions? Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. There's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and the agenda is adopted. Item C, which is the approval of the May 25th amendment. The May 25th, 2017 minutes. Uh, um, the commissioners has been mailed to you earlier. You all should have received it. Any edits, additions, or corrections? Is there a motion to approve? Mm-hmm. There's been a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And the minutes are adopted. We're on to council members. I did see one council member in the audience, Mina. Council Lady Johnson, would you like to come up and address us? Thank you for coming. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. And go Preds. <laughs> uh, I am here to speak on item number two. I think it is currently consent agenda. However, uh, we do have a couple of uh, people who would like to pull out from the consent agenda. Uh, so it's not on the. Uh, it's not on the consent. Okay. Council. Great. So it's, I'm speaking on item number two. So this particular uh, development, we have been talking literally almost two years. It started as a 78 unit and density and traffic, stormwater, uh, always the concern. So we have met our neighbors and developer and property owner have met four or five times. And each time uh, we got good suggestion from the neighbors, uh, the developer and designer incorporated all the this condition. And currently we have 54 units. And I think uh, originally uh, your planning staff thought it was a great idea and it was on the consent agenda. So as you can see, compared to original 78 unit plan uh, with uh, the adequate uh, stormwater measurement and street uh, plan and so forth, it uh, definitely become better plan. However, the, you know, as neighbors concern, it's still one way in, one way out. It's a legitimate concern. Uh, they're gonna widen the street to accommodate dedicated left lane and dedicate right lane. And also another concern is uh, stormwater. Of course, Metro have one of the strictest stormwater regulation, and I have no doubt uh, this plan will follow precisely on that uh, stormwater regulation. So having had all this concern from the developer and engineer, majority of the people uh, surrounding uh, in that neighborhood feel this is a much, much better compared to original plan. So I am hearing uh, lots of support as well. However, you know, we do have uh, still concern. So what I would like you to ask is, please hear and see in the good eyes. And if you feel there should be more condition need to be added to this plan, I'm open to the suggestion. And one thing I can promise you and I'm telling every people uh, in my district is, the planning uh, commissioner's recommendation is a recommendation. My work and neighbor's work start from there. So once uh, you pass uh, this plan, I will be having more community meeting and asking our neighbor's opinion. What would make plan much, much better and palatable and compatible with that community. So I would like to guarantee you that work will start the minute uh, you approve this plan or disapprove, which might, which, whichever the case might be. I mean, my philosophy is if you disapprove, 
it's not going to go forward. But if you approve and this plan is adequate plan, I will make you sure it's going to follow every single condition and add more necessary uh, conditions, such as one thing was uh, brought up from Friends of Warner Park, because this uh, plan will be developing abandoned tennis court. So that's where uh, the building will be. So Friends of uh, Warner Park is concerned, are we going to see city from the park? So is there any way to modify the view shed? So if there's a way to modify view shed, we would like to do so. And a developer and property owners are uh, fully committed to work with Friends of uh, Park as well. So for that, I would like to uh, carefully consider this plan, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Council. We really appreciate you coming out. Thank you for your comments. Uh, and I'm looking around the room to see if there's an, any other council members. Seeing none, we're on item E, items for deferral withdrawal, Lucy. Good afternoon. Items for deferral or withdrawal on this evening's agenda, starting on page five. Item one, 2016 SP-004-001, Sky Nashville, to rezone from R6 to SPMR for various properties along 33rd Avenue North for 123 multifamily residential units. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the June 22nd Planning Commission meeting. Item 3, 2016 SP-060-001, to rezone from R6 to SPR zoning on property located at 2021 12th Avenue North to permit up to four multifamily residential units. Staff's recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Item 4, 2016 SP-098-001, to rezone from SP to SP zoning on properties at 910 and 912 North 2nd Street. To permit, to permit uses limited to one single family or one two family unit per parcel. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the July 13th meeting. Item 5, 2017 SP-005, the livery at 5th and Monroe, a request to rezone from MUN to SP zoning on property located at 1235 5th Avenue North to permit a mixed, un, mixed use development. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the June 22nd Planning Commission meeting. And as a note here, staff recommended to the applicant to defer to look at additional traffic and parking issues, and the applicant agreed to study those and defer. Item 6, 2017 SP-033, Donaldson Station, to rezone from CL and RS10 to SPMU zoning on properties on Donaldson Pike to permit 208 multifamily residential units and commercial space. Moving on to page 6, item 7, 2017 SP-038, 1339 South Dickerson Pike SP, a request to rezone from CS and SPMU on property at 1339 Dickerson to permit bus service and repair and office. Staff's recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Item 8, 2017 SP-041 Autumn Ridge Rural Hill, a request to rezone from RM9 and RM20 to SPR zoning for various properties along Rural Hill Road to permit up to 72 multifamily units. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the June 22nd meeting. Item 9, 2015S-165 at 2044 Straightway, a request for final plat approval to, to create one lot on property located on Straightway. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the July 13th meeting. Item number 10, 2017S-068, Crowley Woods Subdivision, a request for final plat approval to create two lots on property located at 426 Crowley Drive. Item 11, 2017S-082, a request for final plat approval to create three lots on property at 227 Marcia Avenue. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the June 22nd meeting. Item 12, 2017S-111, the H.G. McNabb subdivision, a request for final plat approval to create two lots and to remove reserve parcel status on property on Radnor Street. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the June 22nd meeting. Item 13 on page 7, 
103-79P Riverfront Shopping Center, a request to revise a planned unit development district on property located at 1432 Robertson Road to permit an addition to an existing car wash. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the June 22nd meeting. 14A, 6885P, a pod cancellation at 2516 Buena Vista Pike in West Trinity Lane. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the June 22nd Planning Commission meeting in the related case, 14B, Buena Vista Downs SP, a rezone from R8 to SPR zoning for properties at Buena Vista Pike to permit a multifamily development with a maximum of 216 multifamily residential units. Staff's recommendation, again, is to defer to June 22nd. Item 15, 2017Z-037PR, a request to rezone from CS and RS5 to RM20A, MULA, R6A, and RM9A zoning for various properties on East Trinity Lane. Staff's recommendation is to defer to the July 13th meeting. Item 16, 2017Z-041PR, to rezone from RS40 to AR2A zoning on properties at Hudson Road, and staff's recommendation is to defer to the July 27th meeting. Item 17, 2017Z-056PR, to apply a contextual overlay district for various properties on Reeves Road. And item 20, 2017SP-051, the preserve at Highland Ridge SP, a request to rezone from CS and RS 7.5 to SPR zoning on properties at 3474 Dickerson Pike to permit 267 multifamily units in a clubhouse and staff's recommendation is to defer to the June 22nd meeting. Thank you very much. So let's go through the list to make sure we got it straight. Items for deferral withdrawal are items one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14A, and the related case 14B, 15, 16, 17, and 20. Is that correct? That's correct. Commissioners, you've heard the items for defer deferral withdrawal. Is there a motion to defer? Any questions? All right, there's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the deferral say aye. aye. Opposed, eyes have it, and those items will be deferred. Lucy, we're on consent agenda. As information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry into the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements are met, please be advised that you should seek independent legal counsel. The items on consent is notice to the public. Items on the consent agenda will be voted for at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that these items are removed from the consent agenda. So the first item on the consent agenda is page eight, number 18. 2017 SP-048-001, the Somerset SP, rezoning from CSIWD and R10 to SPR zoning on properties on Lebanon Pike to permit 25 multifamily residential units. The staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all. 19A on page 8, 2017 SP-050, the Orlando and Burgess SP, rezoning from RM20 and RS5 to SPR on properties on Burgess Avenue to permit eight multifamily residential units. Staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. 19B, the related case, 143-74P, Richland Creek Apartments, cancel a planned unit development overlay district at 5400 Burgess Avenue. Staff's recommendation is to approve subject to the approval of the associated zone change and disapprove if the zone change is not approved. Item 21, 174P-009, Hickory Hollow Mall, Section 2, revise the preliminary plan and for final site plan approval for a portion of a planned unit development overlay on property at 925 Bell Road to permit an addition to an existing financial institution. Staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions. Moving on to page 9, item 23, 2017Z-58PR, to rezone CLNR6 to MULA zoning on properties at 1030 
1043 and 1043 East Trinity. Staff's recommendation is to approve. Item 24, 2017Z-061PR, to rezone from IWD to MUG zoning for property located on Athens Way. Staff's recommendation is to approve. Item 25, 2017Z-062PR-001, to rezone from IWD to MUG zoning for property at 300 Great Circle Road. Staff's recommendation is to approve. And item 26, 201-69P-003 Blue Beacon Truck Wash, a request to revise the preliminary plan and for final site plan approval for for a portion of properties located at 13105 Old Hickory Boulevard to phase the development and revise the layout for a truck washing facility. Staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions. And lastly, under other business, item 30, which is to accept the di director's report and approve administrative items. All right, thank you. The consent agenda, so again, we'll go through these items to make sure we got the right items on the consent. Mm -hmm. Items 18, 19A, and 19B, 21, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 30. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. And commissioners, you've heard the items on the consent agenda. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the consent agenda, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and the consent agenda is adopted. So, what that means is that leaves the two items for public hearing are items 2 and 22. Is that correct? Yes. So, for everybody out in the audience, if you're not here for items number 2 or 22, uh, we've already taken care of your particular items, and I appreciate you all coming. So, let's go ahead and start with item 2. Good afternoon. Item number two is the zone change request for Boost Commons. The request is to permit up to 54 multifamily residential units and a recreational center slash personal care service facility. That recreational center is existing on the property now. The property is highlighted in red. This is along Bonds Gap Road and Highway 100. Staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Current zoning is R8. The policy is conservation and T3 suburban neighborhood maintenance. This policy is intended to preserve the general character of the developed suburban residential neighborhoods. And when changes do occur over time, efforts should be made to retain the existing um, characteristics of the neighborhood. Before you is the proposed site plan for the 54 residential units and the recreational center. The existing recreational boost fit, uh, fitness center is right here in the middle of the site. The proposed 54 residential units would be towards the west of the site. As you can see, these would be a multi-family units. They would be oriented to either to the open space in the middle or onto a new street. The access will come from Bonds Gap Road, where the existing access is, to provide access to the uh, multi-family residential in the rear. Sidewalks are provided throughout the development for the residential units, as well as along the existing access road here, improvements to sidewalks along Bonds Gap Road uh, for an eight foot wide sidewalk and six foot wide grass strip will also be installed. The site does have some conservation on, on it existing. The properties, the proposed residential units actually work within the sites and stay outside of that 20% steep slope zone. Staff does recommend approval with conditions and disapproval without all conditions as this proposal is consistent with the policy. It's a little shorter than I thought, thank you. And this item is open for public hearing and the applicant will have 10 minutes. You can reserve two minutes of the 10 for your rebuttal and uh, Mr. Dick, welcome. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman, I uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, we've enjoyed working with staff on this and the council member. As the council member had mentioned, we've been working on this for almost two years. 
Um, this site actually was an old drive-in. I don't know if anybody's as old as I am. I was 64 yesterday. And so uh, this was an old drive-in site. I used to go there when I was a child and my parents would take me you know, home in Franklin. I'd fall asleep going home. But So the slopes on this site are not really naturally occurring necessarily. Uh, a lot of the, it had a lot of slope to it. They came back years later and put tennis courts in. And in order to get flat tennis courts in, there was a lot of slopes between where the tennis courts exist today. Uh, so this site um, is, it has 225 units of multifamily. I think the staff report will tell you that adjacent to the property. And so this uh, is a good infield uh, project. We originally did have 78 units. Through many, many community meetings we've had, we've tapered that down to 54. And the main reason behind that is the, this site has been reoriented to like interior courtyards. Originally, it, uh, these units faced drives that had parking and it really wasn't that attractive. And Another reason that the, the density has been reduced is because people on the upper side on Highland View and another public street, we tried to do everything we possibly could so that buildings would not be seen, so view sheds from those streets would be protected. And um, uh, the friends from Warner Park was actually at our meeting. We had another meeting last night. We had committed to the community that we would always keep them informed on what's going on. We've had community meetings all along the way. And uh, one of the members of Friends of Warner Park were there, and they were concerned about uh, not necessarily view sheds of what would be seen necessarily, but maybe the buildings are built to a particular color palette uh, and that uh, buildings are attractive and, and don't... Um, create a, a negative impact, I guess, when you're driving along a, a public park and a scenic uh, highway. So uh, this plan has a lot of walkability. It is adjacent to a fitness center. Uh, we anticipate a lot of people that uh, live here will be very fitness oriented. They'll be able to access the park with uh, walking or their bikes. Uh, so that's a pretty good opportunity there. Uh, again, we've had a, a number of community meetings. Uh, there were always concerns and always have been concerns on every project we're involved in about storm drainage and traffic. Um, we've set aside a large area on this site to actually handle storm drainage. We actually think that we can um, handle the storm drainage better than it exists today and probably actually improve on the, uh, or the decrease the discharge that leaves the property today. There's a tributary that runs through the property, goes downstream. There's always been a lot of uh, concerns about this tributary. tributary it's quite large. Uh, the small area of this site as compared to that large tributary doesn't really have a great impact, but we still felt like we needed to do what we could do to reduce the runoff from the site and we're able to do that. Uh, the existing development has an angular entrance onto Vaughan's Gap Road, and so that angular entrance is being eliminated. It's being widened to three lanes, so there'll be a dedicated turn lane. Uh, the existing boost facility um, handle, uh, there are a lot of children that go there from different schools. I think there's school events that take place in these buildings. There were no places to park buses, and so we've added some bus parking there, which will help alleviate traffic as well. Um, as far as the proposed units are concerned, it's all adequately parked. It meets all the zoning requirements and probably exceeds them. There'll be a great deal of landscaping. There's a lot of sensitivity that went into this plan. Uh, every time we've had a community meeting, there's always someone that attends a meeting that's never attended before. And so we're continually getting comments. But at this point, the comments that we have are really very minor in nature. Um, there are conditions I'm pretty sure the council member is committed to make as it goes through the process uh, the next two months. Like, for instance, last night we had a, a neighbor that said, will you ever to be, be able to build balconies on these buildings? Well, that's not anticipated, but there's nothing in the conditions that, I guess, prevents it. So we would certainly add something. And I think we'll add notes like that as it continues to go through. So the council member will probably have some uh, conditions that she would add. But there's no significant changes that would be anticipated on this. This layout will be firm layout. The number of units will remain. Uh, the last two community meetings we've had, there have been really no objections uh, as far as the uh, overall nature of the development and the number of units. We'll continue to talk about sm small minor details and um, we'll continue to do that as it goes through the process. I know there are a couple of neighbors here. Uh, I think one of them was not able to attend last night, so I'll be interested to see who, what they have to say. But I'll hold back two minutes and uh, we'll just go from there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You have two minutes for your rebuttal. Anyone here wishing to speak in support? Support? Anyone wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. 
And sir, if you would state your name and your address, and you'll have two minutes. Thank you for coming down. Not as fast as I used to be. I'm a retired professional engineer. My name is Dan Shilstadt. I live next door to the Booth site in Bellmead Highlands. Uh, I've watched this site change from a drive-in theater to a to a tennis club to an athletic club, and I was present when zoning was governed by councilmatic courtesy. I was present when Comzo was adopted. So there are a lot of approvals, uh, improvements that I've seen in the process. My major concern is one entrance in and out next to a railroad track. My concern, I've had a stroke, I've had heart attack, I've had open heart surgery. People that are living in there, if you're gonna get an ambulance in and out of there, it's got to get in and out within eight minutes if you're gonna help the people. So I am concerned about that time and that handling. I'm also concerned that the homeowners association for these condos don't turn them into a hotel for professional athletes because in some of the meetings with Boost, they had talked about bringing professional athletes in and housing them in there so that they could be get professional training and workouts and whatever else they do. I think the design has improved as I've followed it over the last 10 years. You guys disapproved this 10 years ago, but it was a different it was a different concept and a different design. I was here then. I doubt if I'll be, still be around in, when the next 10 years go. So uh, my major concerns are the traffic and the getting in and out of it and the impact on the utilities because all the sewer lines were relined recently and that cuts their capacity down. So when they start adding to it, those lines may have to be redone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. Give us your name and your address. Okay. Two minutes. Hi, my name is Ruth Thomas. I'm a certified PA in the state of Tennessee. I'm practicing geriatric and palliative care medicine. Um, I live at 6844, which if you look at the map, is the little triangle that points right at the top western part of the housing. There's a big um, one single building up at the top there. And um, my neighbor, um, who wasn't able to be here today because he's working, um, is opposed to the um, sort of insignificant sized um, green space buffer between our um, single family zoned properties. Um, they have three kids. Um, we've got a very pastoral, quiet place and have been in that house since the 1980s. So um, we find that the changing the zoning to make it multi-use, multi-family is going to impact the fact that we're in a single family area. Um, so initially I wrote a letter which you have on file last year um, with an, a number of other issues and I also concur with um, difficulty in emergency access, emergency egress, uh, proximity of the railroad train. Um, there's just a lot of issues there that um, we really need to work out. Um, it's a big project for a very small area with a lot of environmental impact on the floodplain, the stormwater, um, and the electricity in that neighborhood is already overloaded, and apparently um, the power goes out in the West Mead area because um, it overloads the breakers or the transformers. So the infrastructure of this housing area has to be kind of independent of the neighborhood that it's impinging on. So um, those are... Oop, sorry, my time's up. Can I talk for my neighbor real quick? Um, Un unfortunately, you can't. Okay, that's, that's not. He wants a 150-foot buffer. Okay. And that. does he have a letter? He can always submit a letter to us. He'll or? submit a letter. It's just that we didn't. Um, he didn't get the information. Or come to the microphone again. I'm sorry. He didn't get the information about changing uh, the location of that back building until afternoon today, so we weren't able to submit it in time. But I did submit a letter at 11:30 today. He can still send it to us. So. Right. We'll have okay. him send it. Thank you very much for your okay. time. Appreciate Thank you. It. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Hold on, Dale. Hold on, there might be some. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? All right. 
rebuttal. Two minutes. Okay. Thank you. Um, this site actually, one of the benefits of this property is it actually sits low, so it sits well below Highway 100 and it sits well below the residences around it, and so that allows the view sheds to be better, but it only allows the one point of access. There's only one possible point of access on this property, and that's the point of access that exists today. And this has been signed off by Traffic and Parking, and it's been signed off by the Fire Marshal as well. Um, as far as utilities are concerned, we have letters of availability for Metro Water and Sewer Services that say that ut utilities are available for the property. Uh, I've worked with Ruth as, as recently as today. Uh, I think that during the next two month process, there can probably be some elevation tweaking or some slight shifting that could probably benefit her. The distance from her house, uh, the back of her house to this proposed building is 150 feet today. From the property line, it's probably 30 feet, but uh, this proposed building is over and on the other side of a slight hill. I still think that we could probably reduce the elevation of that building so that uh, the, those two neighbors, her and the one that uh, adjacent to her, will not have any disturbance or probably wouldn't be able to see this building at all. But we've talked about that at our meetings multiple times. Uh, the council members committed to work with the council, with the neighbors as they go through the process. Uh, I see no reason why we should delay this any further. I think the council member would hopefully even support. I think she somewhat indicated that. She obviously wants you to look at this independently, as you always do, which is uh, if you see anything that we're missing or we need to add or delete, uh, we'll take that information and we'll go back with it. But I appreciate it very much. Staff is recommending approval. All the departments are recommending approval, and I would appreciate an endorsement today. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else wishing to speak, we'll declare the public hearing closed. And I'm going to start with Vice Chair. You want to go first? All right. Um, I guess w just one quick clarification, I guess, for the staff. That, that is a signal, isn't it, coming Bonds Gap Road to Highway 100? Yes. Okay. So when we talk about widening it, they're talking about creating a dedicated turn lane off of Von Gatz Road onto Highway 100. Is that correct? Off of Highway 100 to Von's Gap Road here. Oh, off, off of Highway 100. Right. Into there. Oh, it's, that's the dedicated, not, not further down, closer to Highway 100. This one, let me grab my... I don't think it's urgent. I was just trying to make sure I understood. <laughs> sure, no, I understand. They, um, with the TIS, excuse me, with the TIS, they had had requirements regarding um, the intersection at Bonds Gap Road and the 90 degree angle and how that would be improved with the last plans that came in that is indicated on the plan. So that's okay. why they're not actually in the traffic and parking conditions. It's just an approval right now. Okay, okay. Um, can you go back to that? Because I can. It helps to see the yeah. other multifamily and, and the aerial. That yeah, that's very helpful. So there's two sections of multifamily in the area for this neighborhood maintenance policy. One is over here where I'm circling, and <coughs> also another neighborhood is over here. Okay, and I assume this is for you as well. Um, I s assume since it's multifamily, um, it's rent. Do we know if it's rental? We, we do not know that. No. So in terms of the concern about potentially having short-term renters in this property. Um, there's nothing that we can do on the con from a conditions point to say anything about, about that. The uses could be limited to exclude short-term rental properties. Okay. I mean, I don't, I, we only heard that comment from one person, but that might be something that we take into consideration. I mean, from a planning perspective, I think it fits right in. I mean, when you look at it, you see that, that this is a development pattern that's consistent with um, what's already there. Um, so I don't really have any other further concerns. I do think we might want to have a conversation about the, the short-term rental part, if that's something others have a concern with. But other than that, Looking at the caption, if the bill is submitted as it's listed here in the staff report, saying 54 multifamily residential units in a recreational center slash personal care service facility, that excludes short-term rental properties. It does mm -hmm. as it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then I, I don't have any any further concerns with it. Commissioner Tibbs. Yeah, I too don't have any um, concerns. Actually, the uh, I was 
glad to hear that it actually included the boost fitness, you know, the bus, um, uh, proposed bus parking. And, and then I was the question you uh, actually answered about the improving the stormwater retention, I mean, for the whole site. So you're actually considering everything as opposed to just your um, housing. Um, and I, I'm okay. Now that I had more explanation, I see that the, even though they're all going out to Vaughn's Gap, it's I, I think this is appropriate, and as um, she pointed out too, it's kind of consistent with that area. So, so I'm I'm feeling favor to support it. Commissioner Sims. First of all, I want to thank Commissioner Johnson for Councilwoman Johnson for uh, your incredible work. Thank you for working so hard with the community to hear their concerns. Um, I think this is appropriate for the uh, area that you've got. I like the staff recommendations. I do have one question about, um, I've seen a lot of um, people come in and promise lots of things on conditions that end up not being if we don't get it in writing, and that has to do with the environmental sensitivity of this area, and is there something we can do to really protect that, um, the shed view, uh, making it part of the conditions? And I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's possible or not. So, just to clarify, um, if I, if I might, when you mention environmental conditions and yeah. the view shed, do you mean the view shed from adjacent properties well, to the buildings? I hear the concerns of the community, mm -hmm. and the councilwoman brought it up, and it's not listed as a special condition, mm -hmm. and yet it is, I think something that we need to address, so however, right. however that needs to get addressed. I think. Um, so as the site plan develops and as we move towards a final, we'll have more detailed information such as elevations, um, and it might be at that point if it's sort of a minor adjustment, mm -hmm. um, that is something we could look at at that time. Um, I think I'm just trying to think, we might want to be specific about if we're trying to avoid seeing any building at all, or if it's that we want to have a certain type of material um, or something of that nature that might help with us to sort of frame the, the condition. I think we can definitely look at some additional landscaping or buffering mm -hmm. around the, the, the perimeter of the site. And the view shed from Highway 100 might be a little more difficult, I think. My recollection of the view from that angle is that it's a little more wide open and I don't know how much landscaping you would need to, to buffer it from that direction or even if you want to do that at all. I think having um, the appropriate architectural standards so that what is seen is acceptable might be the better approach from Highway 100. but. I think landscaping can be looked at along the perimeter, and if it's not already on the plan, I think there is there are landscape buffers already on as part of this plan. I, we can I always just, look at additional buffering if necessary. I just hesitate for us to pass this without some kind of condition on it that addresses the view shed, however, whatsoever is appropriate with that. Mm -hmm. so. Anything else, Commissioner? You good? I'm good. Okay, Commissioner Haynes. I'm good. Okay, Commissioner. The only thing I have is, can we go back a couple to the aerial, which is easier for me to view? Because I see that I agree that it's, and the, well, back to the one where we can see the other properties okay. with the pretty colors. With oh, the pretty colors, there you go. So you can see, I mean, it does look consistent with the development. I think these are all developments that have not been before us uh, as a commission now. And it's something that continues, that has come up recently several times that I just want us to highlight. I know in this property, it's, my concern is, is with the community's concern that if I were li living in this area and something happens and a train going around this track overturns and there's a spill and everyone has to get out, there's only one place to go. And if there's a flood again, there's only one way in and out of this build, this property. I understand that traffic, that, that we've signed off on that, but I think we need to start paying more attention to that. And I mean, I just want to highlight that I was there for the flood of 2020, 2010. I was helping friends strip their houses down and trying to get out in and out of built communities. And it's a scary thing when the water comes up really quickly. And if a train derails, and something spills, and everyone tries to get out of some of these other planned communities with one entrance. We have said no to several recently because of that. So 
I won't go against the rest of the commission who seems to be leaning towards approving this project, but I'm concerned that we're continuing to see this as a, something that happens. The other thing is, does anyone look at the electrical grid issue? Because that was brought up in several, two emails, I believe, that they have breakers currently being overloaded in this area and this is gonna add additional stress to the electric grid. Is that something that we look at? It's not a planning issue, I know, but it's because is it something that one of the other groups I've ever, I've never seen that before. Our plans get submitted to NES and they would provide comments to us if they had concerns. So they didn't they didn't That's provide right. anything. Okay. Okay. Well again it's something that if it's coming up as an issue, I don't know how we would deal with it without something from NES on that point. But so I'm I'm gonna go with the rest of my commissioners on this, but I do want us to, to start if we can to start looking more at ingress and egress on property. So we, we will need a, a motion from any of the commissioners? Well, can I ask one clarifying question on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Um, so the one entrance and exit is, we're referring to the one entrance and exit off of Vons Gap Road to the property, but you can still go Vons Gap Road to 100 or Vons Gap Road the other direction. So they're not totally trapped in the, in, in the event of a some kind of an accident is or there, flood. Is there an exit out? The other direction other down Bonds Gap Road right. yes. okay. would get you out. Percy Warren, okay. Yeah. So there's two. All right. Yeah, it's just that there's one entrance on and onto the property. In, yeah, in that, that's really what property. I'm talking about. Because if you look at the other plan development, <clears throat> similar situations, if For you go sure. back, they have like, it's what seems like, a, almost like a call, it's a soul. Yes. So yes. you all would all circle and then everyone had to go out that one entrance. Yeah. Well, I think, um, again, I'm, I trust that the council lady will continue to work through some any of these issues, so I'll make a motion that we um, approve staff's recommendation to approve the project with all conditions. Well, then, do we want to improve, uh, also state something about, you oh, know, yes. with um, trying to improve view shed through landscaping buffer and... Uh, what would be appropriate Design language for, for a Bob, condition? This, this would where where you uh, are the expert. I think I think you could add a condition that requires staff to work with the applicant at final site plan approval to consider ways to improve the view shed um, around the property uh, at final site plan approval, and we we can determine what the the best way to do that would be, whether it's through landscaping or some other method. And that's from both Highway 100 and or surrounding properties, whatever that is. Right, whatever you're concerned with, I think we can we can do either one of those. I think that's just in keeping with the conservation overlay and environmental So can I make a motion to approve staff's recommendation that's with conditions plus what Bob just said? Exactly what he said. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, it doesn't mean that, you know, no building. It means, you know, working within the view shed. So right. just to clarify for Mr. Dale so he doesn't get all excited. <laughs> um, all right, so that is a proper motion. And second, any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it with all conditions. All right. Item two is adopted. We are now on to item number 22, um, but I have to recuse myself and will not participate in the, <laughs> in the debate, so I'm handing it over to the vice chair. You want me just to stay here? Yeah, and I'm going to pass the gavel over to you. Pass that. Gavel. Yeah. How are you recusing yourself? <laughs> I have to recuse myself on this because of uh, it's a restaurant. I represent a restaurant, so um, I can't participate. But because of quorum purposes, I have to stay uh, seated here. So. Okay, so we're on item number 22. Okay. Good afternoon, commissioners. We're going to try to wrap this up, so if you can take the conversation out in the hall. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Jessica Beekler. The next item on the agenda is item 22, a request for modification to the Bedford Avenue urban design overlay for the Etc. restaurant patio awning. The request is for modification to the UDO awning standard to permit an awning over the existing patio that is in the right-of-way located at 3790 Bedford Avenue at the southeast corner of Bedford Avenue and Crestmore Road. 
Planning staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions the modification UDO awning standard. The current zoning is mixed use limited MUL. The property is within the Bedford Avenue urban design overlay, which is intended to be a mixed use neighborhood with buildings for living, working, and shopping with a main street character. The current policy is T5 Regional Center, which is intended to enhance and create regional centers, encouraging the redevelopment as intense mixed use areas. The proposed awning is consistent with the policy to create opportunities to live, work, and play. The proposed project is to cover the existing patio with an awning that is shown here in the site plan. The patio that is in the right of way was already approved as part of the final site plan and the building permits for the building. The current tenant for the corner retail space is the Cetera Restaurant that is using the patio for outdoor dining as shown in this image. They are now requesting an awning that requires modifications to cover the patio. The modification request is to permit an awning over the existing patio as proposed that exceeds the 25 foot maximum awning length requirement as measured along the street frontage. The awning is proposed to be 29 feet 9 inches in length as viewed from Crestmore Road as shown in the right elevation and 35 feet 9 inches in length as viewed from Bedford Avenue as shown in the left elevation. Going into planning staff's analysis, the awning standards in the UDO are primarily intended to address awnings over windows and doors rather than this condition of an awning over a patio. The standards require awnings to reflect the shape and character of window openings and the proposed awning does meet this intent by reflecting the shape of the patio and the curved facade of the building. It meets the intent of the UDO to articulate and accentuate buildings at the corner by adding a more de defined element to the corner, and it also meets the intent to achieve a Main Street character by creating an all-weather outdoor dining option that further activates the pedestrian environment. The material of the awning is proposed to be canvas and is consistent with the awning standards. So in conclusion, staff recommends approval with conditions of the modification to the awning standard. The proposed awning provides additional articulation to the facade and increases outdoor dining options that further activate the street. The conditions are that the awning patio shall not be enclosed, including with materials such as plastic. Prior to issuance of a building permit, a mandatory referral for the encroachment is required. And also prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall work with planning and public works to determine a location for the existing light standard that is located inside the path, that would be located outside the path of travel, and all other conditions of public works shall be met. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Hey there. Uh, my name is Manley Seal, the architect, working with Doug and Paul, who are the restaurant owners uh, back there. So, um, We've been working with uh, planning for six to eight months to get this awning to a um, design that they felt would be appropriate and we also felt would be appropriate for the neighborhood. Um, so uh, again, we didn't have, we did not design the building or the patio, we designed the in interior of the, of the space and then the patio uh, was already there. And so as you can see, they're already using it uh, with the umbrella. Uh, over the table, um, but our intent is always, always to try to integrate uh, uh, a, a covering over that patio, uh, and, and to make it uh, to integrate it into the architecture of the building with the curve and uh, with the existing patio, and go along with that same sort of language within uh, the materials allowed in the UDO. Uh, so we felt like that's what we've we've, we've done. Um, it's been a long process just to get a, a, a canvas awning over a patio, um, but uh, the spot is here, um, and um, several emails and meetings with with, with planning, and this is uh, we this is where we are. And so we feel we're glad that uh, planning has uh, recommended approval. Um, and we are ready to move forward uh, with with this design. Um, oh, Doug, my restaurant owner might want to say something. And if I can just get you guys to give us your address when you have a second. <laughs> yeah, my address, uh, my office is 904A Main Street, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Great. Thank you, uh, Doug Hogreef. Uh, my current address is 3201 Aspen Grove Drive, Franklin, but it will soon be 1206 6th Avenue North Nashville. So just kind of okay. go Nashville, <laughs> go Preds. Um, the, the purpose for this patio, obviously, I mean, uh, we are currently using umbrellas. They're 
they don't work very well. Uh, Bradford's kind of a wind tunnel. Um, the umbrellas are, frankly, in, in our mind, somewhat dangerous in that, that they can come out from the tables on windy days. Uh, also, when it rains, they, they, while they do cover the table to some extent, the diners still have to move inside, which, um, it, et cetera, is a, it is a high-end restaurant. Um, it, we're partnered with Dead Paquette on, on that, uh, as we are, are also etched in downtown Nashville. And uh, we, you know, if somebody is having a nice dinner and it, the rainstorm pops up out of nowhere, which tends to happen in Nashville quite a bit, especially lately, uh, we have nowhere to move them inside the building. It's a 2,100 square foot restaurant, which is really small, um, you know, in comparison to just 5,200 square feet. Uh, we don't even have a walk-in cooler in this restaurant. So we, um, we, uh, we just really want to put a patio <laughs> or a, a canvas over the patio to make it more um, all weather. Um, you know, the, uh, as Manley said, we've been working a long time on this. Um, we, um, you know, we just, we already have a patio over our, a, I'm sorry, an awning over our front door. Uh, this will match that. Uh, we think that it will um, aesthetically be very nice. Um, we're, we've actually gone through three different awning companies to find the proper one to use to make it look uh, high end to match the building and the street and the area. Um, so, you know, we, we feel that um, this, if, if anything, uh, a, it makes the patio safer from having uh, umbrellas out there that, um, that blow around. And two, is going to make it uh, better for, for, for our guests and for the neighborhood. Um, the patio is also higher, um, which I know there was some concern about site on, on the curve. Um, this, this patio will actually be higher than the umbrellas, which um, uh, would block some sight lines. But this it, overall to us just seems to be a, a, a pretty logical thing to have on an already existing patio. And I'll save the rest of our time for rebuttal. Great. Thank You'll you. have two minutes remaining. Thank you. Okay. Do we have anyone here that's speaking in support of this item? And anyone speaking in opposition? For those speaking in opposition, if you can just uh, line up behind the sign and we'll bring you up. You'll have two minutes. Um, and please start by stating your name and address. Good afternoon. My name is Joe Cook. I live at 2411 uh, Crestmore, which is the condominium at the end of Bedford Avenue. Uh, my compliments to the planning department and the commission for uh, originally adopting the Bedford Avenue UDO. I think it's an excellent example of providing an adequate buffer between a residential area and a commercial area. And I think it's achieved that in the characteristics and in the humanscape dimensions. Uh, I'm an engineering uh, graduate and I'm here to talk about the safety aspect. Unfortunately, the uh, artist renditions that were provided indicate that Crestmore um, on the side of the restaurant is of some of a small slope up, but indeed it's a higher slope than that. And the topography of the land causes people coming west on Crestmore to turn onto Bedford. Uh, they're coming down the hill pretty rapidly. So when you pull up to the intersection of Bedford, could you put the map up so that I could point to it, please? Okay, so you can see uh, the uh, road coming down and then coming across this. Uh, pulls up to a stop sign and then traffic is coming down on Bedford Avenue, uh, I mean on Crestmore. Unfortunately, the angle of the direction of cars coming down requires you to pull further into the intersection to be able to see what's coming down Crestmore. The uh, artist rendition of the awning shows that that awning will in fact impede visually the ability to see up Crestmore. It is a safety concern, I think, of some uh, not minimal proportions in that it impairs the ability to see until a car has pulled further into the intersection. There is no stop sign on Crestmore coming down, so as a result of that, you're needing to pull further into it, and cars coming down Crestmore tend to cut the corner. So the length of the awning extending beyond the, uh, the curve actually impedes the visual ability. The height from the bottom of the awning to the parapet wall on the architect's drawing was four foot 10 inches. So that is a very narrow slit with a hill coming down. That's my concern. Thank you. Anyone else speaking in opposition? Okay. <laughs> 
I'm Norman Stevenson, and I live at 2411 Crestmore at the Whitney, right across the street. And I'll d just say that uh, initially that uh, I think most of the people were happy to see the place, and uh, we, were we were pleased uh, to see that there. But I must say that we have, ha have a history of things being toned down for the character of the street. The Marriott, if you notice, is the smallest Marriott sign next door I've ever seen, and they made it very small at the request so it wouldn't stand over. We had a dentist above, the, above who had a beautiful sign that cost him a lot of money that was too big. He voluntarily took it down to a small sign. We don't want all of this from an aesthetic standpoint. You've heard this, the, the serious safety concerns. The, uh, it's very pleasant. It looks like there, and, it, and many of us have eaten there many times, a pleasant outside place to eat. The, the whole character has changed, and aesthetically, it changes the whole character of that whole, that whole, uh, that that whole that whole street, and we no longer have a, a pleasant, uh, a pleasant uh, sidewalk cafe. We have this monstrosity, which looks like uh, to me a monstrosity. It looks like something that should belong downtown is fine, not on our street, and that's. Our time is up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Ruth Crouch, and I live at 2411 Crestmore Drive, 104. And uh, I have the same uh, thoughts on my piece of paper as Norm just let you know about. We have a whole variety. We have doctors, dentists, lawyers, architects, businesses, Marriott Hotel, residential apartments, and condos. So we're really a mixed-use area. And we love the food at the restaurant. And what I find is uh, is the uh, the length. I think it's 35 feet and 29 feet of this awning, which makes it quite huge over this patio. And then, in contrast, the current look has moderately high blue umbrellas, and they're over tables, and they're very nice looking. And it really almost has um, a Parisian European feel. When you go by, you, you say, wow, that's, that's pretty nice. But this black, I think it's black awning, is just going to be huge, a uh, large piece on the front of this corner. So um, I don't think it achieved the Main Street character of our neighborhood as it is now, it's going to be diff quite different, and it won't blend, I, I don't believe. But that's from the standpoint of smaller neighborhoods, you're not downtown, and um, just a pleasant, nice Bedford Street. So I ask you not to vote or to vote um, on this particular request, um, and that's pretty well all I have to say. Oh, two trees are going to be cut down. Uh, on Crestmore because they've got to ex uh, expand the sidewalk. So we're going to have a lot more cr uh, concrete and fewer natural elements in the landscape. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else speaking in opposition? Okay. Would the applicant like to use your two minutes for rebuttal? Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Shramkowski, and I'm at 18308 Crown Brook Circle in Franklin, Tennessee. And uh, thank you, Jessica, for working with us on, uh, on the project. 
Uh, I mean, et cetera, for those who have not been there, it's a very quiet, quaint little restaurant, very small inside, 60 seats. Uh, you know, we're looking right now at adding a, a patio that is about two to 300 square feet. Uh, you know, we have looked at the, the traffic situation and worked on the height of the patio, the, the, the awning, you know, to, to make sure that it is safe. So I think that we've done that, and I think we've accomplished that. The, the trees, the trees are to be relocated, not necessarily taken down, um, but there was a plan to uh, add some additional landscaping that was part of the uh, Public Works and the City Planning uh, Department. So I mean, you know, the goal here is this is a fancy restaurant, it's a nice restaurant, we don't have, want people walking around with nice plates of food with nowhere to go when it rains. So I mean, that's all we're trying to accomplish here, and I think that uh, the planning department's worked well with us and the architects have worked well to try to uh, make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, we'll declare the public hearing closed and um, Commissioner Tibbs, if you willing to start us off? You have a good eye for these things. <laughs> um, let me ask a question. So about the trees, I'm, I guess I'm misunderstood. I thought this was just an awning and I apologize. So we're, we're extending the sidewalk too? So as a part of Public Works conditions, they were looking at, in order to get, um, let's see if the pointer will work on here, um, in this area here, if you can see the pointer, um, to extend, to widen the sidewalk a little bit in that area, so just cut off a little corner of that landscaping, and then also to relocate the light pole that's in um, the sidewalk here, um, but as part of our, one of our conditions was to work with us on where to relocate that light pole so we would not be losing any trees. So that is part of Public Works conditions of the awning and the mandatory referral that would have to go through them is to, to widen the sidewalk. And um, so, and I was looking at, so, is, so the canopy is actually um, going out further than what they had, um, yeah, thank you. That, that uh, Does this one work or the elevation? Could you go back to the existing real quick? Sure. The one that you just showed, that one. That's so where that small wall is there, mm -hmm. is it going out past that? No, it's not. It's okay. um, coming up from the retaining wall and the fence that is actually shown there will angle in a little further than it does now um, and the awning will go over that area. Okay, okay. But, but still, so they're asking for the sidewalk. I guess I'm trying to see why is the sidewalk being widened? Can you repeat that one more time? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, well, so because, I, see, at first I was thinking, well, it's just over there, but if it's making that wider, do the, if we're not impeding into the existing sidewalk, what's the? So um, I think just as part of the mandatory, like Public Works is gonna take this opportunity. So where the wall is currently and where the current landscaping is, there is um, less than the five feet of travel. So they're gonna take the opportunity to widen that okay, so as part of the mandatory. Okay, so it's, it's just, they're gonna take this opportunity to make it wide like it should have been up initially, potentially. Yeah, what we're considering here would just be the awning over there, and that would be part of the mandatory. It's a condition of this, but part of the mandatory. Okay. Well, um, all right, so if it's- I was it's gonna point out, all, all of yep. this is in public right of way. That's why mm -hmm. that we've been working with Public Works and the applicant to try to figure out ways to improve the streetscape, to remove the, the light pole from the sidewalk mm -hmm. and to widen the sidewalk as much as possible without losing trees, that, that is the goal. Um, but all of this, the patty, all of this patio area and sidewalks are in the public right of way. That's why they'll need the mandatory referral for the encroachment into the right. I got you. So it's not a, before the uh, restaurant, you could just walk on the side. I mean, it, it wasn't designed to necessarily be well, a. <clears throat> no, it was always designed to be a patio, and it was just with the the modification that's requested here. It still has to go through a mandatory referral process okay. that allows for encroachment into the right-of-way, the awning that will be encroaching into the right-of-way, and with that, um, with this modification or exception that's being requested, um, we're trying to improve the streetscape along with that. Okay. And sorry, just to clarify too, the patio and the retaining wall already received a mandatory referral for their encroachment in 2015. Okay. So this would be for the, the mandatory would be for the awning and the fencing and then to address the streetscape. 
Okay, as a, so the, the way I see it right now, and I pulled it up on my Google Maps here too, I, I don't feel like it would, it doesn't seem like, and, and uh, maybe we should ask public words, but it doesn't seem like it was be a visual as much um, just the way it's set back. Uh, I, I'm assuming that they looked at that with, uh, uh, when, is that? Yeah, maybe we have uh, public, public works is here, so I'll okay. let them. Yeah, why don't I not put words in your mouth? <laughs> Devin Doyle, Public Works. We have looked at this and um, checked against at typical AASHTO design standards as far as um, how you measure uh, right of way from the adjacent roadside uh, edge of travel way. And, and um, our, our uh, opinion on this at, this at this time is that it will not impede um, sight distance. This is a stop controlled approach. Um, Crestmore, it's, it's accurate, Crestmore is not stop controlled, um, but using, the, uh, using the, um, the guidelines and standards that are laid out in AASHTO, uh, we're comfortable saying that it will not. In, in spite of that, we have put placed a condition uh, or made a recommendation to the commission to place a condition that the applicant will ensure that it does not. And so we will get a second chance to, to reaffirm that position um, as this works through the encroachment process. Okay, that's, I appreciate that. That's, so I, I generally feel I'd support this. I feel like it'll be back far enough. And that um, study that, uh, that Public Works has done, I think, um, and especially the condition that it's gonna come back to them to make sure it is, uh, I'd feel comfortable supporting this. Commissioner Sim? No comment. Mr. Haynes? Um, I very rarely go against staff, but I, I think this is, um, this is a great little street. They spent a lot of years rezoning this. We've got these conditions in a lot of our mixed use projects. The patio is already encroaching into the right of way with really aesthetically pleasing um, awnings, table awnings. I, I think this protrusion from the building is gonna look really out of place. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna oppose this. Mr. Hagen there. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um here was my question. When this UDO standards were adopted, was this already a restaurant? Do we know? Um it was a restaurant. Okay, so the patio and the restaurant were, were the building was developed after the UDO standards because because the comment that this you know, this type of awning wasn't part, you know, the restriction we have now doesn't cover this kind of awning. That's, uh, yeah, we don't have, under the awning standards, it talks about more windows for windows and, and doors. doors. So around this, but we felt like it meant the intent of the UDO it, to be in a mixed use area. Um, the UDO has different subdistricts, and this is in the mixed use subdistrict of the UDO, which is supposed mm -hmm. to be more pedestrian friendly and active. So we felt that it met the intent of that. Did you comp do we have an opportunity, were there other like situations that you compared this to, or was this still, it was an outlier in terms of, was there anything like this? I mean, I know there are other awnings on restaurants. I'm saying that we, have we looked at a UDO and an awning over a restaurant recently? Um, I don't think we've had this condition that I'm aware okay. of. No, we, we did, have not had this condition frequently, and that's why it took mm -hmm. six months or so to work with the applicant on this. We were going, researching other awnings in other cities and other streets and trying to figure out what the best approach would be, and this was not an easy one for staff, but we did work with the applicant. They'd modified their plans several times, I believe, mm -hmm. and this is where we are today, and we're comfortable with that this meets the intent of the UDO, and that's why we're recommending okay. approval. I agreed. Um, so, I mean, I understand that. I, I guess the other question is, so when they did the, when they did the restaurant and then they did the patio, the patio was within the UDO, they had to come to us, did they have to come mm -hmm. to you and get this approval? And um, it was so it was before my time, but yes, it was approved. The final site plan for the building was approved in 2010 and it did show the patio and retaining wall there. But it did not show it didn't show exactly awning or anything else. It just no, it didn't show the awning. It just showed the, the patio space there. Yeah. So, and it wasn't intended, I believe, for retail. Okay, it was retained so for the, In the final site plan, the space was okay. for retail. I see that there is a condition that site distance shall not be adversely impacted. 
from traffic and parking. Um, and that's one of the conditions listed. So in terms of that concern, it sounds like there are two concerns. One is the aesthetics and one is the safety. Safety, I, mean, I, I feel, is going to be handled because it's a condition of the, but the, the aesthetic one is a question. All right. Those were my questions. Did you have something to add, Bob? No. Um, and it is, this is consistent with the awning that currently exists over the front door, is that correct? Material wise? It is the wise? same material, yes. Okay. Okay. So, are we, are we gonna need to, I mean, if we were to approve this, is this gonna change, is there, I mean, I guess it's a small UDO, so it doesn't really need a, unlikely we're gonna see multiple awnings of this size, but was this something that we're gonna need to address? It, they're requesting a modification for this site. I think mm -hmm. if another site comes in, we would have to come Just back. Look at it. It's not changing the standards of the UDO. It's asking for a modification for this particular site. So if anything else comes in that needs a modification, it would come through the same process. But part of the reason of having a UDO is so you don't have that. But I get that this wasn't something that was considered when this right. was done because, and the awnings were 25 under the UDO or 25 feet, but that's length. There's, is there any restriction on depth? The UDO just specifies 25 feet in length. That's so strange. Just FYI, that's very <laughs> strange. You could have a 25 foot, but it could be 50 feet deep. You know, I mean, it's just, I know, but that's just I a, think very, we'd, yeah. it's a very odd. Look at it, how, very what, what is reasonable in that case. Yes, okay. <clears throat> a standard awning would look like, okay. Well, in, in your conversations with the applicant, was there convers discussions about different types of materials and if there was something that we felt like this was, other than the fact that it was consistent with what's already there, that this was the most appropriate from a design um, perspective? So the, the UDO prohibits the use of plastic and vinyl, and um, so we felt that the canvas would be the most appropriate kind of material um, for the awning. Okay, so anyone want to make a motion? I'll start it off. <laughs> uh, make a motion to approve uh, with um, staff conditions. Second. So we have motion and second. Any further discussion? How many extras, how many seats are on the outside patio? How many seats, I mean, right now you said you have 60 in, a ho in, the, ho in the house, right? So how many are on the ex external on the patio? Yeah. Somebody have to come to the microphone. You're going to have to come to the microphone. You're going to have to come to the microphone. So currently you have umbrellas and you have seating out there. Uh, we roughly have, I should probably know this, about 24 seats outside. Um, the, the patio will actually become smaller because we're bringing it in closer, so we'll probably lose a couple tables. So we'll probably end up somewhere, I would say, between around around 20 seats um, outside. Okay. But it, it, it is a significant part of, of our business. It's so 30% yeah. of your so it, seating it, is outside. When it, when it gets cold outside, our sales drop about 20%. So, you know, any, anything that we, any income that we can derive from that patio is critical. Okay. And is there, I guess, you, in the estimate arch for the, Architects, engineers, is, in terms of height above that comes down, is there, what height level is the, you probably said this already, is this um, awning going to be, so is there any way well, to, 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 we're matching what's the there, level. Gotcha. And, and there is a projection above us, and so uh, the, 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 the second floor actually projects out. Got it. Um, so to maintain like the top of the storefront, that is, we're trying to, we feel that windows. was something architecturally gotcha. possible to get. Okay. Same. So to follow up on that question, what is the height from the ground to the awning? Can we, yeah, that should on the drawing. To reference, it's been a, it's been a while. I can't read that. Eight foot ten. Eight foot ten to the bottom of the. Yeah. Well, we got we got sent some from one of the 
which uh, I've got the elevation or the the perspective. Um, well, we had the this the existing. Yeah. Sorry. So in the picture, you can see that the, the umbrellas are actually lower than what our mm -hmm. awning would be. We're raising it up to where the, the two heaters are. So they just point of reference. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Are we ready? Any other discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Show of hands, so I can count. One, two, three. Okay, and one opposed. So motion carries. Recused. And yes, the chairman is Do recused. Oh. Do you have to? Yeah, vote? I'm voting with the majority. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take it over. I'll take it over. Here almost, we go. I was almost with you. I'm surprised every now and then. Oh, you do. <laughs> and I was almost with you. Three All right. So we're on uh, item H, other business, historic. No report today. All right. Uh, parks, no report. Executive committee, we, we just want to remind everybody it is summertime. Try to make sure you let Kelly know way ahead of time if you're going to take a vacation. That way we can figure out who's... And I'll I'll do the same, Kelly. You're preaching to the choir that's here. I know, right? Why don't you tell the people that aren't here? I, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Uh, and then um, Bob would like to say something. We've got some exciting news. We we do. We have a new planner in our land development division, Levi Hill. If you can stand up, he's comes from a, a long ways away. He's for, he comes from California, so oh my. he's just started. So welcome aboard. Left coast. Good deal. Anything, and the council lady is not here, so anything else? <laughs> Seeing uh, any, uh, any motion to Fred. adjourn? All right. Or adjourn. Fred's. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.